Jim Campaholic here with a little bit of a video log update. It's been a while since we've posted the video and now the 2017 camping season is um, pretty much wrapped up, especially if you own a pop-up or a tent trailer. But that's where I have a little bit of an announcement. See that beautiful trailer behind me there? That's right, we've gone to the dark side. That trailer behind me is a Salem Cruise Light FSX, hang on, I gotta get the whole name right here, um, 197BH. We've owned it now for a little bit over a month and we've gone camping in it twice. Um, it's a very big change from the pop-up camper. And the purpose of this video is to give you a little bit of a walkthrough tour of the features of the inside and the outside of the trailer, but also to tell you a little bit about what our experience has been like moving from a pop-up to a travel trailer. Um, and it's been the best of times, the worst of times, let's put it that way. So without further ado, let's take a tour. All right, so uh, this is a better view of the outside of the trailer. Uh, the actual body of the trailer is about 19 feet long. She's about 10 feet high from coupler or from the ball all the way to the bumper. Um, she's about 22 feet long. Now I will say that <laughs> this is pretty small by travel trailer standards, but when you go from a pop-up camper to this, uh, this is a huge, huge leap. It's a single axle trailer does come with a power awning, which is absolutely fantastic. No fussing around with a bag awning and unfolding poles. You just simply push a button and out it comes. On the door side here, we've got a nice radius door. Um, there is no window in the door, but that doesn't really matter because there's a screen behind it. We've got marine grade speakers so that you can play music outside if you'd like. This is the back of your fridge. You've also got your potable water fill here. Now it's unusual to have that on this side of the trailer. Typically, a lot of your utilities are on the other side. So that's one little complaint I have. This is the back of your furnace. And of course, we've got a six gallon um, gas only direct spark ignition water heater, which is really, really nice. Coming around the back of the trailer, we've got a spare tire, pre-wired for a backup camera, but we don't have one of those right now. On this side, you've got a hookup for your city water connection, as well as cable and satellite if you had it. Now this is a bunkhouse model. That window up there is the bunk that my son sleeps in. There is no window for the bottom bunk, but I'll talk more about that inside. We've got our 30 amp 110 connection. This has a wall mounted air conditioner. And then below it, it has a channel with spouts so that as the air conditioner is dripping, it doesn't drip all over your window, but this is your uh, window for the dining area. This is the window for the bedroom. And then there's a nice little storage compartment. It's not necessarily passed through because there's no door on the other side, but it does allow you to put your camping chairs and um, tools and bits and pieces for uh, hitching up. Um, and it's got a nice little clip here that holds the door open so that you're not having to, to use your head. We've got four scissor jacks um, to stabilize the trailer. And of course your dump station for your black and gray tank, that's all back here at the, the rear of the trailer. Going up to the front, it's got a 20 pound propane tank, battery there, nice deep cycle battery, uh, power tongue jack. Power tongue jack is really great, but I personally find it's kind of slow. Um, but I suppose it, it beats the heck out of cranking it up and down. It does have a light as well, which is nice. The one problem we do have is that when we hook it up to our van, we bought a brand new 2017 Grand Caravan about a month before the trailer, that once the van and the trailer are hooked up, you can't open the tailgate because this large housing here now gets in the way. So that's a little bit, uh, a little bit different. Okay, so now we're inside the 197BH, um, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a walkthrough um, and highlight some of the features that we really like, as well as talk about some of the things that are a little bit frustrating. We've done two trips uh, in this trailer so far, um, so we've definitely given it a pretty good shakedown. Uh, no major mechanical problems or failures to speak of. Um, everything's worked fairly well. We had a bit of a rodent problem, unfortunately. Um, I won't go into details in this particular video, but I think that's been uh, taken care of. Um, but let's take a look at the inside and um, show you kind of the, the general floor plan. So let's start off uh, with uh, the kitchen area. 
Uh, this particular trailer, as you can see, has a very large countertop. So this is your entry door. You've got the nice screen um, that separates from the door. I was a little apprehensive about the fact that the door was solid um, and didn't have a window in it, but really when you prop the door open with the screen, it's, it's, it's really great. Huge amount of counter space, which is awesome. Um, there is a connection, RCA jacks, as well as cable connections for a television if you wanted to put a small television here. We don't have one currently, but um, you could add that if you'd like. Um, we've got some power outlets here. Love the backsplash. This is actually a wallpaper, but it is a very convincing tile effect um, that runs across the back of the kitchen. Let's get a little more light in here. Um, and I, I think it's absolutely great. We've got a nice, decent size sink. It's not massive, but it actually works very, very well for washing dishes. Of course, uh, a big benefit to this trailer over our old pop-up is that this does have a water pump as well as a hot water heater. So we have, of course, hot and cold running water with a nice, uh, almost residential style faucet, which is really nice. Two burner gas hob um, or stove top. We had three burners in the other trailer, but um, with the addition of the microwave, which we have been able to use on, on 15 amp, sometimes people will tell you, oh no, no, never use your microwave if you uh, don't have 30 amp service. Obviously, you're not going to run a television or a kettle or a lot of other stuff if you're using the microwave. But for breakfast, we've been able to reheat some beans um, or tomatoes or something like that if you're having an English breakfast. And we've ran it on a 15-amp cord. We have not blown a fuse. We have not melted the cord. It's worked very, very well. So not a big microwave fan, but for some stuff, popcorn, uh, reheating drinks, this is a great option. And it means that you don't necessarily need, rather the number of burners um, that we had on the other trailer. Lots of cupboard space. I love the fact that they've got the glass inserts in the cupboard. It just breaks up the wood. Hello. Sorry, stealing that from Andrew Ditton. <laughs> um, lovely shelves up here. So lots of room to store bits and pieces. Obviously, you don't want to put anything too heavy up here. We don't have a lot in the trailer right now because obviously it's the end of the season now. It's November, so um, we're not going to be doing a heck of a lot more camping. Cupboards to the right of the kitchen. So lots of space for bits and pieces. And these doors are quite solid. I mean, they are a veneer, but they're not a flimsy, thin, horrible little plasticky door. They're, they're quite solid. They catch quite nicely, and they work quite well. Another set of cupboards down there. Now, while we're at the kitchen, it's a little hard to see, but that is our furnace. Um, we always used an electric space heater in the pop-up, but this is an actual gas furnace. Oh my God, folks, this thing is, is so powerful. It can push this trailer, which admittedly, if you look, it's not a huge space. Pardon the fishing rods on the floor. Um, but it can push it from about 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 in a matter of like a minute. It is fantastic. Got a nice drawer here for bits and pieces. Um, another cupboard. Doesn't have a lot of space because your um, water pump is underneath. We've got a Dometic gas electric uh, fridge. Um, you can set it to either be automatic or you can tell it to switch to gas. Um, this latch is really stiff. We've got to get used to that. Ooh. But I like the fact that on this fridge, it is bigger than the small Dometic fridge that we had in the pop-up. You've got a nice little spot on the door with the little grips to hold bottles and milk cartons. And there is a bit of a freezer compartment, uh, which is great. We've sadly um, underestimated how long the freezer takes to get cold and we've put um, uh, like frozen treats in there. Um, yeah, it needs quite a while to cool down. We've had some frozen treats get a little bit uh, goopy because we didn't give it enough time. But other than that, the fridge itself uh, works well. My one complaint with the fridge is it's automatic. So we can't set the temperature. And um, in, in the middle of doing some fall camping, it actually froze. Uh, I had a can of tomatoes that I was using for breakfast and it actually froze them. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be better in the summer months, but it almost runs too cold. And as far as I know, there's no adjustment. It is automatic. But if anybody knows of a way to adjust it or has any tips on how to stop it freezing things, um, then go ahead and leave a, a comment uh, below the video. And then another cupboard uh, to the left. So this is uh, definitely a big plus for my wife. Um, she loves having this little kitchen window. 
it's all fogged up right now, but it uh, allows you to look out into the campsite, see what the kids are doing, and see what's going on. And of course, the blinds, you know, they're kind of cheap, but they're easy to replace. If they break, you can go to Walmart and get a new set um, fairly inexpensively. So anyway, that's the kitchen. To the left of the kitchen, we have a wall-mounted air conditioner. Now, I like this for a couple of reasons. One, it's not on the roof, so you don't have a lot of extra height to deal with. Secondly, you can conservatively run it on 15 amp. Again, you've got to be careful about how many other things you're plugging in. Um, and if it completely quits, I mean, this is just a standard 8,000 BTU air conditioner. You could pop down to your local Walmart or Canadian Tire, and, and I'm sure, I'm fairly certain, that you could just buy another one and pop it in here as long as it, uh, it fits. The one challenge we've had with this is that if the trailer is not perfectly level, this will start to leak inside the trailer. We actually had water dripping out from underneath. So I think the key will be, uh, if anything, to actually have the trailer slightly leaning towards the wall of the air conditioner because the last thing I want is, is water coming in. It is super powerful, even on fan, it's incredible. Uh, in the summer months when it's 35 degrees Celsius, 40 Celsius, that sucker will cool it down in here very, very quickly. We've got some nice cupboards either side of the microwave. There are two of them. Um, again, you don't want to put anything too heavy up here, but this was nice when my mom stayed with us at the campsite. She was able to put all her bags and her clothes and things up there. Below that is the dinette, and it does drop down into a bed. It's got the, uh, the ultra leather pleather, I guess you could say, and then they've done a really nice job with the fabrics on the cushions, and um, the table, as I said, breaks down into a nice size bed. You've got some wood blinds here, just to kind of add a little bit of class, and you've got a nice size window to look outside. Um, the windows in this trailer are pretty easy to open. Let's see if I can adjust the camera here, it's probably a little hard to see. Let me shut the blinds. But there's an arm here that you simply Take it out of its little um, holding clip, spin it around, and then you push, and the window opens. Now you can see it's a bit of a pain because it gets stuck. It does get ugh, does get stuck on the blinds, which is a little bit of a pain, um, but we're getting used to that. But what I like about it is that the window can stay open even if it's raining, and um, you wouldn't really necessarily want to leave your campsite if it's raining, but if you're sitting here having coffee, you can have it open um, to air out the trailer, which is nice. Um, towards the front of the trailer is um, a queen size bed. It is a short queen. It's not as long. I believe it's 74 inches long instead of 80. I think a, an actual queen is, correct me if I'm wrong here, I think it's 60 by 80 and this is um, 74 by 60 so it's a little shorter. Um, we have a window at the head of the bed. Um, again a little bit of a pain because you've got a <laughs> the latch to open the window is in the blinds. I also find that if you lift the bed up, because underneath the teddy bear mattress there is a storage area, this is the pass-through storage that we talked about earlier, you end up hitting the blinds a lot when you're trying to lift the mattress up, so that's a little bit of a pain. I will say I'm not a big fan, Forest River, of this thin, flimsy mattress. The teddy bear finish is really nice, and it's certainly better than the, the bedding that we had in the pop-up, but it is not that comfortable. And we've actually had to bring the foam pads from the pop-up here because you kind of bought them out on the plywood. So I think one upgrade I would make to this trailer um, is definitely to get uh, a better mattress. You got a little bit of a shelf across the front of the trailer. Um, you could put books, not a lot of books, um, some clothes, some light items. And there's a little um, side table there with a power outlet where you can put a coffee or a, a clock radio or something like that. Um, something I missed, um, it does have a radio, DVD player, uh, USB auxiliary, Bluetooth. Um, we've also got a digital uh, antenna on the roof. Um, we don't currently have a television, so we haven't made use of that. And then you've got your control panel. You can monitor your battery, your fresh tank, black tank, gray tank. You got your water pump, water heater, um, outside lights, indoor lights, and your awning. Now the awning, um, again, is electric. It's fantastic. There's an LED light strip, which I can't really show you today, but you can pick <laughs> pretty much any color under the sun for that LED light strip. I'm not sure if I can find the remote. 
I'll show that to you a little bit later. The kids love it. You can have all these psychedelic colors and flashing colors, and it's it's phenomenal. Let's look at the sleeping quarters for the kids. This is the, the, the bunkhouse part. So this is the top bunk for my son. Um, climbing up the side is a little difficult for him, so sometimes he'll climb up on the dinette. I'm a little concerned about that because, as you can see, this is not hugely solid, so curious to see how long that's going to live up to the punishment. But he's got a nice long bed. Um, there's no stickers to indicate the weight limit, but uh, based on the construction, I would suggest no more than about 200 pounds. I'm certainly not going to get up there. He's got a nice window with a curtain that he can open up um, to put outside, which is good. Somebody working away out there. And then we've got the bottom bunk. This is where my daughter sleeps. Now, at first I was a little disappointed that there's no window, but actually we find this is better for her because she would probably be a little freaked out or creeped out by having a window there. And this creates a nice little cozy space um, for her to sleep. Uh, so the bunk arrangement um, for, for small kids is a real great feature. Lots of lighting throughout this trailer. There's, there's LED lights all over the place. Um, they use very little power, give off very little heat, um, and they're a, they're a great addition to the trailer. Now, let's look at the piste de resistance, the element of the trailer. This is the element of the trailer that my wife was most excited about, I think. A restroom or a washroom facility. You have a nice foot flush Dometic toilet, and then we have a, a little bit of a shower cubicle with hot and cold running water. Now, a couple of things about this bathroom. First of all, you'll notice there's no shower surround. There is this vinyl backed or vinyl paper. I will say that the dealer went through the entire shower and added a pile of silicone sealant, um, more than the factory did. They reassured me that they've been building trailers like this with the wallpaper for a long time. Um, we bought a squeegee and the plan is that when you're done having your shower, you're just going to gently, you know, squeegee down the walls um, to remove a lot of the moisture. So we'll see how it lasts. We'll have to keep an eye on the, um, the sealant. I will say the water pressure is really not the greatest. You do have a pause button to conserve your water. Trying to set the temperature is a little ridiculous, and the water pressure is not that great if you're not hooked up to city water. So this is more, I would say, designed if your kids have got sandy feet, or you just need a little bit of to, uh, to freshen up a little bit, this might be handy. But to use as a long-term solution on a holiday, uh, I don't know. Toilet works great. Um, I was, we you know, we did not have a toilet in the pop-up camper, and I was very nervous about the idea of using one and having to dump the black tank. I will say that it's been trouble-free, no smells, we've used the right amount of water and chemicals, and it's, it's worked really, really well. It's plastic, though, and it creaks a lot when you sit on it, and that's, I'm sure, normal, but it's a little unnerving. But in the middle of the night when it's cold or raining and you suddenly need to go to the bathroom, um, this is an absolute blessing. We do have a roof vent. Um, the one complaint I have is there's no fan. So if someone does their business in here and it smells, it takes a little while to get that smell out. So you definitely need to open up um, the roof vent. While we're on the subject of roof vents, um, there's another one here in the main part of the trailer. I need to put some covers over them, either the Max Air, <clears throat> excuse me, roof covers or the Camco covers because we had them on the pop-up, and it was really great that if there was ever a risk of rain, you could just leave them open. Um, and for the most part, you weren't going to get any rain in the camper unless the wind was really blowing. Um, but if it was, you know, light drizzle, you could go out and not have a problem. With these, you got to be very diligent. If you open this vent up, and you go out fishing or hiking or whatever for the day, and it rains, you're going to have a problem. So that's going to be a big um, item on my to-do list for next season is to get some roof vent covers because that's a little bit of a pain. So anyway, that's the trailer from front to back. Let's now talk about owning this trailer and using it. What's been great? What's driving me crazy? All right. Let's talk about the trailer and what it's been like uh, to own 
the trailer um, so far. I'm sorry if the angle on this is a little bit messed up. I'm not a videographer, but uh, anyway, I think that's probably acceptable. So, why did we move from a pop-up to this? Well, if you watched my previous video about the benefits of a hybrid versus a pop-up, I think you probably saw uh, a little bit about my opinion and why the pop-up was not necessarily working well for us anymore. We found that the tent trailer was a tremendous amount of work to set up and tear down. Uh, it was very stressful anytime it would rain because we don't have a driveway at our condo. Um, we have to bring it here to a storage facility. And I always dreaded the idea of having to drive it all the way back here, open it up again to air it out, and then close it down again. And it was just exhausting. Um, it didn't have a bathroom. It didn't have a furnace. It was missing a lot of uh, creature comforts. And I honestly felt that it was tiring to use the pop-up and we wanted something that we could use long term and that's where this trailer came into being. Why didn't we go with a hybrid? Well, this trailer, believe it or not, brand new, 2018, never been used before, retailed for about $16,000 Canadian and that's in August of 2017, so about $16,000. That is very, very economical. Now, I will admit, if you look at the fit and finish, if you look at the fixtures, if you look at the design of it, um, it is kind of a bargain basement trailer, but it's made by Forest River. They're a pretty reputable manufacturer, and the trailer is pretty solid. Um, it is wood frame construction with aluminum. I would have um, aluminum skin. I would have liked an aluminum frame construction. Um, to prevent any risk of rot, um, but that's, you know, big bucks, big bucks. It does have a rubber roof with a 12-year warranty on the rubber roof, which is, is nice. But for what it is, it was light enough that our new van could tow it. It wasn't enormous, um, so that was nice. Getting it into smaller campsites has not been a, a problem. But the price, you couldn't beat it. When you figure that a lot of the brand new tent trailers are ranging from eight to $10,000 hybrid, some of them are 25,000 and up, this was a phenomenal deal. Uh, we bought it from Smithville RV in Smithville, Ontario, and I'll put a link to that dealership uh, below. Fabulous dealership, gave us a great deal, did a very thorough inspection and walkthrough, um, and um, gave me a very comprehensive uh, walkthrough of it. And it's it's been phenomenal. Using the trailer has been great. Uh, at the end of a long day of camping, when you're cold and you're wet and you're tired, having these four solid walls and a nice roof over your head to come back to, I gotta tell you, is amazing. The first night we camped in it, it was windy, it was raining. We laid in bed, it was so warm in here, it was 70 degrees. You could barely hear the rain because the rubber roof seems to insulate some of the rain noise. It was so peaceful, and it was wonderful. Woke up well-rested. Okay, the bed's a little bit uncomfortable, but woke up very well-rested. Um, and then we were ready to get out the next day and, and really enjoy the, the camping experience. Um, the kids love it. It's You've got a lot more space. You've got more places to put things. Um, and when you get to your site, there's a lot less setup. All you got to do is back the trailer in, get it level, put down the stabilizers, um, hook up the power, make sure the water and everything's all set, turn the gas on, and you're pretty much ready to camp. When you're leaving, you know, if you're going to take your clothes home and wash them, pack up your clothes, make sure that everything's put away in the cupboards, uh, bring the corner stabilizers up, unhook your power, turn your gas off, um, and you're pretty much ready to leave your site. But, <laughs> this is the big but, there are some compromises if you're going to move from a tent trailer to a travel trailer. Obviously, with more features and amenities, there's a lot more stuff you've got to maintain. Having a toilet means you've got a lot more to work with. So let me give you an example of what I mean. This trailer has a 40-gallon onboard fresh water tank. We camp at provincial parks. That means no city water connection. So when we get to a provincial park, like the Pinery, for example, the first thing we've got to do, if it's we want to use the water system, we've got to fill that water tank. Because really, um, you know, this trailer is pretty close to the tow limit for the van. And by the time you put everybody in the van and all their equipment, you're getting close to the threshold of what the van can tow. That amount of water weighs over 400 pounds. So you really don't want to be driving down the road with that. So you got to fill that up. Well, I don't know if you've filled a 40-gallon water tank lately. It takes a while. So there's that to consider. The other thing is you got to dump the black tank. 
when you leave the campsite, if you're not camping again for a prolonged period, you got to dump that black tank. And the lineups, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to dump the black tank is huge. And I never forget the first time I did it, I was so terrified of making a mistake. If you've seen the movie RV with Robin Williams, you should check it out. I was scared of being too slow and annoying other campers. It really stressed me out. I will say the whole process took less than five minutes. There was no smell. It was a very clean process. It worked really well. But you can't just up and leave. You've got to make sure that you dump the gray tank and you got to dump the black tank before you, um, you go home. Um, the other thing to consider is that there is a lot to maintain uh, for winterization. There's a lot more, and I'm gonna. I'm still learning all of this stuff. Um, when it comes to looking after it in the winter months, it's there's more to it. I do like the fact that you could just come in the trailer. You know, you don't have to op you know crank it up and open it up. You just open the door and come on inside, which is which is great. Um, so owning it, towing it. I mean, the gas mileage on the van is is not good. We we're averaging twelve to thirteen liters per hundred kilometers when we tow this trailer, which is is okay. We were getting about nine to ten liters per hundred kilometers before um, we were towing it. Don't ask me what the miles per gallon is. I have no idea. You'd have to do the conversion. Um, I will say that this trailer is not very aerodynamic and our van does not do well at speeds above 60 miles an hour or 80, 85 kilometers an hour. Um, trying to take it on a main uh, freeway or interstate um, and trying to travel at those speeds, uh, the van just... Oh. Oh. Excuse me. We'll edit that out. Trying to travel at highway speeds, you know, 65 miles an hour or 80, 85 kilometers an hour and up, the van really struggles. And we were averaging about 17 liters per 100 kilometers, which is pretty awful. Um, so I find country roads from 0 to 60 miles an hour, let's say, or 0 to 50, This the van can pull this trailer without a problem. Um, but highway speeds, a little bit disappointing. Um, also have to get used to the length of it. I have to get used to how susceptible it is to the wind. These are all things that, you know, I will adjust to. So my ramble here is trying to get across to you. If you're thinking of switching from a tent trailer to a travel trailer, I would highly encourage you to do so. It's not going to kill you financially necessarily if you want something small and conservative like this. Um, but just be prepared. There's a lot more responsibility. There's a lot more maintenance. And when things go wrong, if they go wrong, and so far knock on wood they haven't um, it's not as easy of a fix um, the challenge for us will be that if I need any warranty work done the dealership is almost three hours away from here and I really don't like the idea of having to drag this thing three hours for warranty work so it would have to be pretty drastic um, before I, um, I have any warranty work done um, so yeah that's really it in a nutshell um, very excited to move to the dark side um, I never professed to be an expert on tent trailers, but I had, you know, half a decade of experience of using pop-ups and tent trailers. As we use this trailer and we learn more about it, I'll post more videos. Uh, I'm going to have to winterize this sucker soon. Um, we've already dealt with a rodent problem. So there will be lots of things that we will learn um, and talk about um, and share with you um, in the future. So thank you for watching. Uh, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Um, probably won't be a lot of mo um, movies. <laughs> probably won't be a lot of videos coming up over the winter season, but when the 2018 camping season kicks off, uh, yes, I think we'll be we'll be posting a, a fair bit more. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video tour of our uh, Salem Cruise Light FSX 197BH. <laughs> And um, if you're thinking about making that leap from a tent trailer to a travel trailer, um, I hope this has given you a little bit of insight. Happy camping.